first lecture is on uh, diodes and as I said the uh, this uh, I am sure all of you must have been teaching this course sometime or the other and the I was also not sure what to put okay and uh, in an hour typically kind of our lectures at your place I am sure that our place also it is one hour and uh, we roughly have as teachers an idea how much you can how many slides you need or how many pages you need to cover in a in a one hour lecture and I have much more than that okay. So, the purpose is not to cover all this, but you know kind of interact. So, please stop me, please feel free to stop me, maybe I show your hand or please, please do that you know. If any class and I do not get questions you know I get extremely bored and I always feel something is wrong okay, especially something is wrong with me that is why it's people are not reacting yeah. Now, as I said the main purpose of this particular course uh, itself is to decide on kind of syllabus is one aspect. But the other aspect is to kind of jointly learn from each other you know how to teach and uh, unfortunately uh, I am sure none of you would have had a, a training in teaching like a beard course you know we are all launched as teachers from day one and we are expected to learn the art you know while swimming itself we are supposed to learn and uh, so therefore I am sure we all have different experiences and uh, based on my own experiences I can say some things which have helped as I was sharing earlier also. I was teaching at IIT Kanpur for last uh, 17 years I have just come on a visiting position here for 2 years. Now I have been I, I taught this particular course uh, several times I mean uh, I have taught this in Kanpur we had at that time a strength of about 200 students. So, one shot we had to teach 200 students and uh, it had a lab component also uh, that I taught about 2 times and uh, I have been involved for last 17 years every semester or every year in the either in the lab or somewhere I was involved. At IIT Bombay also last semester I taught a similar course very similar for 120 students. So, as you know in IIT is also the number of students are now very large. So, we have uh, anywhere from 600 to 800 students at a time. So, we teach in about 5 separate sessions. So, I taught one such class, but here at Bombay we do not have the lab also along with the course that is the main difference and there is a separate lab. Whereas, at Kanpur we had that integrated with the course yeah. Now, coming back to diodes so when I quickly go through I also want to share some of my experiences with my own students okay. And I find that students are the same whether it is Kanpur whether it is Bombay students are students okay and no difference. And the maybe little bit maybe you know the city makes some difference, but I think otherwise students are always students. So, I am sure you would have the same experience. Now, uh, I am sure uh, you are all from different parts of India. One of the basic problem in teaching a course like basic electronics is what? What is the problem? Some of some of the problems you have faced. So, one of the problems I faced is that at least some students would say that we have we know it. Okay. At least I had one student he said I am bored I do not want to attend your classes but don't, not, do not attend no problem. But uh, at the same time you would have another set of students saying no, no we do not know anything assume nothing I, I had some, most of the time even here also students said sir assume nothing start from scratch okay. At the same time you have maybe 50 percent students saying no, no we know all this from our boards. So, we have this problem in our country again we cannot complain we have to solve the problem okay. For example, some state boards might have especially if you look at CBSC they are taught everything basic electronics course is over if you have 12 standard 12 standard physics books with you and if somebody understood then do not have to, but we know that it has been taught so bad or they are so confused. So, that is where you have to undo some of the damages okay or some state boards fortunately have not taught them okay and then you have an advantage you can teach them. So, I think I am sure you have all this. So, one of the things I always fun as I said and I am I found this uh, universal last 17 years of experience I can say this and I found it every time one part which students always appreciate that is they want to see things okay and I am sure all of us also appreciate it. So, always make it a point to and I, I have not done it today because you are teachers I do not should not teach you like treat you like kids always bring components to the class okay diodes and they would like to see touch it okay. In fact, it is not a bad idea to burn some of them you know they should see when you say diode characteristics you know they should understand what it means by a diode characteristics. Now, 
uh, when you talk about diodes is one of the most basic electronic device and uh, this is something fortunately most of them know about it. So, we do not need to talk much about uh, diodes, but what is more important is we need to dwell on the applications and also how they how it is used. So, what are the most important concept to a concept concept wise I found one of the most important things for students is that they need to figure out that diode is a two terminal device. And the moment you say two terminal device you are automatically saying that it is a single port device ok the concept of port because later we will talk about two port devices. So, they need to know this word you know two port single port. So, every any two terminal device you now the important thing about a two terminal device is it is completely characterized by one equation ok which is the IV characteristics whether it is Ohm's law that will give you a resistance if you have a capacitor you have a single equation if for an inductor you have a single equation they are all two terminal devices. So, that is a very 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 important concept I always found uh, it helps students tremendously that you can say that if you get a two terminal component take it for granted one equation is enough a simple IV characteristic. So, I think that is the importance of the IV characteristic you know some sometimes these things they figure I mean they also wonder why you say IV characteristic why not something else. So, they should know that you know this is a single characteristic and if you equate them to you show that to Ohm's law which they are very familiar then it makes sense there is a current there is a voltage. So, you are relating the voltage to the current. So, that is the importance of the uh, diode equation. Now, coming to applications as I said uh, diode fortunately is something which uh, students generally understand well because they have studied it and uh, they have some idea about it. It is a very simple device also, but again what is most important is that the applications we need to especially basic electronics course I would say from A to Z you have to emphasize on application and show them and always try to relate to some gadget which they are familiar with and so on. Then it makes and then they keep interest they get interest especially basic electronics course is a course uh, taught to everybody ok whether it is a civil engineer mechanical engineer or anybody you teach it to everybody that is why and it is very important and at the same time today basic electronics course is extremely important why why is it very important today it was maybe not so 10 years ago why is it so important today why is it very important for all engineers to know basic electronics why yeah today you you do not have a single equipment which does not have electronics ok not a single equipment. So, this is another reason why you need to motivate in fact I always I happen to teach always non electrical students always even last semester I taught mechanical engineering students and that is the time it is difficult to teach them. So, I always motivate them by saying that you are very lucky and they are very sur surprised why they are lucky that you are very very lucky. I tell them that you have the most sophisticated you people are going to handle the most sophisticated electronic equipment and they are very happy when to hear that coming from the electric engineer and I said we are very unlucky people they are even more happy and say we are just have three equipment that is all we have a CRO a function generator and a power supply that is all we have and they are very happy and they laugh, but then I tell them but we designed your equipment and then that may complete the story and I think that is very important to keep them and this is very true today you walk into any department you would see that the kind of equipment which is used in other non electrical departments are much 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 more sophisticated than the equipment you would see in your own department. So, this is very good. Now, again when we come look at the diode equation uh, I mean uh, again one of the biggest problem today um, I am maybe I think is more in IITs maybe than less at your place that students are extremely good with maths ok, but what they lack is what something else they lack what is it what it means ok and I always know in IIT system I know it very well if I want to trick a student it's very easy so, write a question without writing an equation just write in words they are sunk ok they are sunk so, write one equation they will solve it just like that do not write an equation but write everything in words you can just trap them completely what I am trying to say is our present generation unfortunately you know have been taught equations without telling them what it means and here like a diode equation you need to really tell the significance of each and every term there and that is extremely important and then it makes sense you know and that is true for engineering 
that uh, you know and that equations they have their domains. Sometimes unfortunately students are taught to think that you know theory is everything you know and uh, so some of these things they must understand and looking at the diode equation the uh, there are a few things which again very common mistakes both students and uh, teachers make. Uh, for example, the diode current is related to the I s. So, diode current I is equal to I s times e to the power v by v t minus 1. Now, what is the relative significance where I s is the saturation current, v is the voltage across the diode, I is the current flowing through it, v t is the thermal voltage given by k t by q. Uh, now, what is the relative significance of these two terms? That is the most important thing. Now, let us look at the uh, forward bias region. Now, in the forward bias region, the first term is, is, is what is important. Now, since V, V t is typically at room temperature is the order of 25 to 26 millivolt and uh, if V is about let us say 5 to 10 times V t, then you will see that even though I is an extreme, I s is an extremely small number typically the range somewhere from 10 power 12 to 10 power 15. We will come to that in a minute again a very very common mistake made. Now, because of this uh, once uh, V the voltage across the diode becomes about 10 times V t then you see that the it shoots up okay, and you get a very very large current here. Now, this is something they need to appreciate that uh, that you know that number V by V t that ratio is what makes a difference and that need to be an order of 10 or to 20. Now, another very, very, very important thing to remember when we teach, when we look at the value of I s, you know very, a very common mistake made is about the value of I s. What do you think would, should be the typical value of I s and why? For a normal diode, let us say a diode which you would use in a lab, in a lab experiment, what should be the value of I s? I will show you an actual simulation, then we will see, but before that, nanoamps. Okay, nano ampere for silicon and micro ampere for germanium. Okay, now today, by the way, germanium diodes we don't use at all. Okay, so we'll but uh, fine. Let's now let me. I want to show you the same equation I just uh, kind of calculated, and now and let's see the effect of I S. Then you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked to see this. Okay, so that's why. Now what I have here is a graph where I have used four values of I S. Okay, same diode equation. 1 is equal to uh, you know 10 power minus 6, 10 power minus 9, 10 power minus 12 and 10 power minus 15. Now, let us look at 10 power minus 6, look at a value like 0 0.6 volts. Okay, at 0 0.6 volts, this is an amps mind you, 10,000 amps, 0 0.6 volts, 10,000 amps. Is there something wrong? So, what is wrong? So, at 10 power 6, value for I s is what? Good or bad? You should never ever use that value. Okay. This is just, I just plugged in numbers and calculated. You can do it yourself also. Okay. It must be shocking. So, you see the effect. Now, look at the same 0 0.6. Let us look at if you use 10 power minus 9, that current is somewhere on the order of something like 20 amps, still amps, but sorry about 10, roughly 10 amps. Okay. Same 0 0.6, come down to 10 power minus 12, that current becomes now 10 milliamps. You see how drastically it is because exponential is dropping, that makes sense. Okay. 10 power, yeah, 0 0.6 volts, 10 milliamps makes sense, the normal diodes which we have made measurements. So, this is why you should always remember, I s value never ever come below 10 power minus 12. Okay. The other will be a gross error. So, this is something very important. In fact, good diodes would have typically 10 power minus 15. Look at 10 power minus 15, your current is of the order of 0 0.1 milliamp. The value which we very commonly use is 0 0.7. Look, let us look at 0 0.7. At 0 0.7, forget about the 10 power minus 6, current goes to you know huge. But even at 0 0.7, a 10 power minus 9 value of I s gives you current of the order of 150 amps, okay, which we have never ever seen that kind of current in, in the lab. Whereas, 10 power minus 12 gives you even that gives you 1 amp. Okay. Now, I am sure in when you make measurements in the lab. So, this this simple equation if you just calculate it will make sense. Okay. 
Now, you would, see, you would have seen that when you do a diode experiment in the lab, which diode do generally do you use? What kind of diodes do you have generally? No, no, normal diodes in the lab, what, what kind of? Yeah, again 4001, okay, that is one diode. What diode is that? It is a, it's a power diode, okay. It is meant for power supply applications. Now, the IN 4001 has 1 amp and 1000 volts DIV, okay. It is meant for power supply application. Now, you would see that, you know, I have I, I done measurements and you would be shocked, I am sure you will be again doing some, doing some measurements in the lab. You would see that in IN 4001, if you make a measurement for 10 milliamps of current, you would see that the forward voltage is hardly 0.3 volt. Now, everything is makes sense, okay. It makes sense now. So, that is why you do not take 0.7, you know, as a kind of a value which is there. You know, that value itself is a approximation. Some of these things students also need to know. I mean, some of these simple numbers, if you tell this to students, you know, they also understand it, okay. Very, very important. And I am sure if you use a signal diode, okay, signal diode is very different from a power diode. Signal diodes would, how do they look like typically? They are very, on the first of all, they are very small, very small diodes. Sometimes they are kind of glass type they have, okay. I will show you some actual measurements also. We will actually show you some of these measurements also here. And uh, or sometimes you have like a transistor kind of a can type also, SH some number they have. They are all signal diodes. Now, those diodes would show you very different characteristics, okay. Now, those signal diodes would have typically IS of the order of 10 power minus 12 or minus 15, that range. But 10 power minus 12 is a good number, okay. Do not come below that. If at all you have to come down, come down only for power diodes. And power diodes we very seldom use for such calculations. So, this is an extremely uh, important thing to remember, okay. And uh, at least for our own sake, you know, keep this numbers at mind. But tell me why, uh, what is the problem? IS is what? Is the saturation current. But if you actually make a measurement, somebody might say that you actually get much higher current. So, the forward region we said it is only forward bias current, but the reverse region, reverse bias in the same equation, you would see that the first time when again your V becomes negative, your negative that e to the power minus V by V t becomes a almost close to 0, okay. Now, we see that I is approximately equal to minus I s, okay. So, that is why this significant those two terms, which actually is very, very interesting. But if you actually make a measurement in the lab, what do you think you will get? Let us take a diode and measure, okay. And you would be shocked that even if you have a diode with I s is equal to 10 power minus 12, if you when you make a measurement in the lab, you will not get it anywhere there. So, 10 power minus 6 that come to our head because of this. You make a measurement, you will get typically 10 power minus 6 or 10 power minus 10. What are the, where is the culprit? What is the problem? Why? Why do you see that? Why do you get a much higher current? So, that is why this 10 power 6 is there in our mind, because we have seen it. Why? Now, the, the problem is the following. I s is some, something, you know, highly purely at the device level. But actually, when you make a measurement, the, there is another current called the leakage current, okay. In a real diode, you have a much higher reverse current. The main reason is because you have leakage effects. And this leakage current is directly proportional to the area. Okay, area of the, the diode. So, therefore, and unfortunately, the strictly speaking reverse bias should be what? Is a constant, which means supposed to have a, a flat line. When actually make a measurement, you will see that what do you actually see? If you make a measurement, in fact, it is very difficult to make this measurement. Why, do, why is it very difficult? Because the kind of uh, impedance the meter, multimeter or whatever it is, if you make a measurement of the multimeter, you will make error, okay. You need a much higher impedance for the meter you need, okay. Now, the problem here is the leakage current is directly proportional to voltage. So, actually what you will see is not this, okay. But you would see a combination of this plus a leakage current which is directly proportional to the voltage, okay. So, these are things which are important for us also to realize that when you actually make a measurement, you would find that the leakage current is much higher than the I s value. So, this is why it is very, very important to, you know, and if you are making reverse current measurements, you have to be aware of all this, okay. Otherwise, you will make a gross error, gross error. So, I hope uh, this is something to think about, okay. So, and the 
best thing I would say is to just sit with me this when we be when tomorrow onwards you will be doing labs. When you go to the lab, please make some of this measurement, okay, and see the limitation of a multimeter. Okay, you must see it. What do you think? What is the typical impedance of a multimeter? Input impedance. What is the impedance? Typical? One meg. Any other answers? Ten meg. Any other answers? Typically, all multimeters you buy today would give you at least twenty meg. Okay, one meg is somebody else's impedance. Which one? Another instrument which you use for measurements. CRO. CROs have are very bad. So never ever makes measurements such measurement with a CRO. Never. If you use a voltage probe, a ten is to one voltage probe, then the impedance becomes ten meg. Okay. So never ever. In fact, multimeters are much better in making these measurements. Because multimeters would most of them would give you at least 20 meg. If you have a very sophisticated multimeter, it would give much better than that. Okay. So this is something very, very, very interesting. Now, when you talk about diode models, I am sure again we we do this in the I am sure you are doing this. And again, some some insights. Ah, yes. Yeah. I am not a device man, but let me I'll try try my best. Okay. Now, when you talk about uh, a uh, basically when you take a device, uh, you know you have this minority carriers and majority carriers. IS is the current due to the minority carriers. Now, that is precisely why it is extremely small. Okay. So, that is basically IS itself is highly dependent on the, dop the doping of that particular diode. Now, so typically the normal diodes we talk about, the signal diodes we talk about, the doping levels are very, very small. Okay, that is why the currents are very, very small. Whereas in power diodes, because you, you need much higher currents also, I mean, it is it's, it's, it's a uh, not only doping, the junction also areas also is very large in a power diode, much the size also we see that much higher. So, IS actually is a function of many things one is the doping, one is the area. So, it is a, it's a lot of these parameters decide the value of IS. But anyway, for a signal diode, the junction area is extremely small. So, that is another reason why the current for a signal diode is very, very, very small. So, I s is a function of uh, of many, many things. Good, it is a good question. See, uh, one very, 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 very good question, I like it, very good question. See. Again, this is another thing we all do in engineering all the time. We talk about models. What are models? A very good question. That is a very good question. It is a very common question, you know, students also face. We must be clear first ourselves. Okay. Now, what are models? Why do we use models? What are models? Take for example, Ohm's law. Okay. Is Ohm's law correct? What do you think? I would say eh? yes or no? It is not completely correct. Yes. When is it correct? When is it wrong? It is correct as long as you make measurements for low voltages and as long as you keep your you know the sorry, sorry. Yeah, see see normal room temperatures it's, it will work very well. Similarly, if you think about the uh, the frequency, okay, you need to keep the frequency also very low. If as you keep increasing frequency and uh, temperature also to some extent, you would see that Ohm's law fails. Okay. So, then why do we use Ohm's law? Why I am asking this question is to bring the issue of models. Why do we use models? Why do we need models? Why do we use Ohm's law? It is a model. It is a model. It is a way of finding if given a resistance, how do I find current? So, it is a model. Now, every model has some assumptions and some limitations. Okay. So, when you talk about a diode and when you say I s, okay, that is a current which flows when you apply a voltage, it is there is nothing sitting inside. In fact, a diode is a passive device. What is the meaning of a passive device? It has nothing inside okay, as opposed to a battery or something. Now, strictly when you actually when you apply a voltage there, like if you apply a forward voltage, you have forward a current flowing there due to the majority carriers. So, you have a much larger current. Similarly, when you apply a reverse bias, what is happening is essentially 
in one sense you can see ohms law strictly speaking is not valid there ok maybe for some very limited range ohms law will work so what is happening is you have a semiconductor material ok which actually uh, i mean you cannot directly model as a resistance but the point is is therefore i mean is if you look at the uh, there is an expression for you can actually write an expression for is in terms of the doping and area Okay, there are standard equations are available, but so the point is this particular IS is applicable only when you apply a voltage. There is nothing sitting inside, so it's a it's a it, it's something which you physically relate to, and actually you can mod. So that's why what I'm trying to say is when you uh, make a, that an, an equation like this. This equation was I mean by Shockley, okay, a very famous person and one of the persons involved in the design of like invention of transistor also. Now this is something they observed and then they try to relate okay and the diodes which they used were point contact diodes not the junction diode because the technology was not well developed in in the early 40s okay so they observed some of these effects and they found a model and they found it to be working is clear okay yeah and by the way uh, brings to another very important issue when we talk about uh, another very 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 important thing is the issue of textbooks okay and uh, um, I, I know one of the most commonly used textbooks in, in universities is what? Milman and Halkias. If possible, please throw it out of the window. Okay. The simple reason is Milman and Halkias is a book I studied when I was an engineering student. I graduated in 1978. This is a book which I used. Okay. That is the time it book came. There was no other book available in the whole world that time. It is a very book, good book at that time. But today, that is a very bad book. Do you know why? Please do not use that book today. Why? No, 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 no. Then I would have used it. We should not uh, bi be biased against Milman Hell. What is the problem? See, that is a book written with the technology uh, knowledge of the 60s. Okay. If you say that semiconductor industry has not changed since 60s, something is wrong. So, you should use one of the current books. One of the best books you can use is Sutter and Smith. Okay. Michael Tronics, Indian edition available, cheap, very accurate, precise, and extremely readable. Milman and Halleck is, is not at all readable. Okay. So, it, if you if you if you are all involved in syllabus, please remove Milman and Halkias from the syllabus. Okay. You will do a big service to students. I'll I will I'll, I'll this notes will be available to you. Sutter and Smith, I will bring that I wanted to bring that book. I will bring you this book and show you. This is called Microelectronic Circuits by Sutter and Smith. It costs about 300 rupees. Thick book, extremely good book. You know. All, all, in fact, Starting from diodes, transistors, no better book I have found even today. Okay. Diodes, transistors, op amps. In fact, your not only basic electronics course, your other analog electronics course, this is all that you do not teach anything else. Too good a book. Okay. And the good thing is, it's fifth edition. If a book has five editions, it tells something. Okay. And that is a book which is followed all over the world. And I have never found a better book. Okay. And last semester, we used another book here called Bob Rowe, L.S. Bob Rowe, again by Oxford University Press a good book, but that is a only one edition plus and minus simple book, but I would strongly recommend all of you to you know have this Sutter and Smith, because you know beautifully tells all this and lots of problems, lots of good problems. This is another very important issue. Now, when we talk about models, okay, again very important to have uh, models. When you have a diode, we have that equation. Now, the purpose of a model and all engineering models is to be as accurate as possible, but accuracy is not the big issue. What is more, what is the big issue in all models? Because this is a very, very important concept not only for us, but for students also, because all subjects they learn models. Here also we are talking about models. What is the purpose of a model? So, you have an equation, that equation, why are you not happy with that equation? Why, why do you need a model? The equation is too complex. Okay. For an actual application, you would like to have a model which is simple, at the same time really kind of reasonably accurate. Okay. Why is accuracy not important, especially in electronic circuits in our courses, why is it not important? Sorry? Yeah, see one very important thing you must remember is, that is why again I said Milman Halkias, you know, I mean it is a book which was written long time ago when there was nothing available, but today you have extremely good simulation tools available. The purpose of teaching a course is not to get accuracy to this third decimal point. 
but is to help a student to design or to do a hand calculation. In hand calculation, you are not looking for accuracy, you are looking for a for a, an, a range. So, I always tell students, you must always have the range in mind, not the exact number. Okay. They should know that if current is in 100 amps, something is wrong in a diode. Okay. That they should get. If maybe within 10 milliamps, 20, that milliamp, microamp, the range is very, very important. Okay. Accuracy, you have a plenty of free simulation tools which they could use. Okay. So, when you talk about exponential model, this is directly picked up from the Shockley equation, therefore, it will be very accurate. But what will be the problem? What is the problem? This is never used, but it is very accurate. What is the problem? Too complicated. For example, you have a simple circuit like this. Now, you apply a voltage, find the current and the voltage. You have one equation, two unknown. Okay. And you, somebody might say that this can be solved either graphically or iteratively, but fortunate thing is just by writing two uh, or three equations, you can write two equations, one for the current. This is the being followed because of the forward bias, you can write just the simpler one. And the second equation is uh, because you write a simple, you know, Ohm's law, if you apply, you can write it. If you iteratively solve this, you will get extremely good accuracy. So, in two iteration, I have done the iteration here, iteration number one, you assume the V d to be 0, which will give you an I d value of battery divided by the resistance 5 milliamps. Now, put that back into the previous equation. Now, you find out what is V d, it will give you 558.8.3 uh, millivolts. Second iteration, take that value, plug in here, find the new value of I d and you get 4.44 milliamps. Plug it back here, find the thing and you see it has converged just in two steps. So, a simple iterative method with simple calculator is all that you need, but still this is too complex. So, because of this, this is not used at all okay. and most of the diode circuits, you do not need this kind of accuracy, you do not need it. So, this is very important when you talk about uh, models. What is important is, so when we talk about we have at least three more models, the piecewise linear model, this is again reasonably good accuracy, a constant voltage drop model where you just take the diode to be just a voltage okay. and you also have an ideal model which is the simplest one. Now, the piecewise linear model uh, essentially what you have is you assume the diode to be a ideal diode and in series with a, a kind of a battery and a RD. Now, the most important thing to remember here is again is that there is no battery sitting here. You have a voltage source. So, the current is flowing what? Into the battery which means it only can dissipate power. So, this is very important in a model because this is a very common doubt. Okay. You have a battery sitting there. Is it delivering power? No. It is only a representation. It can only dissipate power. It cannot give power. Okay. So, it is only an equivalent circuit. So, this is a model. That is the important thing to remember about models. Models are made for our convenience and they always have limitations and they have to be used within those assumptions, not outside that. Now, I have just I plugged in uh, the piecewise linear model and the exact diode equation and you can see that pretty good, pretty good approximation. Okay. But again, what is the problem? Even this is most of the time too complex. Okay. Most of the problems in a diode problem, this is not, but this is very, very good. You will get results very close to what you actually observe. So, this if you want accuracy, then you should go for piecewise linear. Now, the issue is here I have used the series resistance as 10 ohms, should it be 5 ohms, should it be 15 ohms, that depends. Depends on the kind of current, the operating point you want. So, this is where you may have, if you want a lot of accuracy, you may have to play with it. Yeah, the constant voltage uh, model is uh, kind of very, very commonly used and uh, all that you are saying is you have we assume that the diode does not contact up to some voltage. So, up to 0.7 it does not contact and all of a sudden you have infinite current. Okay. It's a, it looks a very, very, very uh, idealistic, but this is a very, very good model. Okay. Especially when you talk about clipping circuits, you do not want lot of complexity. So, this is a, a good model okay. and uh, because of this, the output result which you are going to get will not be very accurate, but that is fine. If you are not satisfied with accuracy, you can first uh, use this and then go back to the previous one. So, very often and uh, this is a skill we also need to pass on to the students that given a circuit, they should learn skills to divide and conquer. Okay. They should know how to and that is 
skill they have to learn. So, that is where when looking at a circuit, they should be able to figure out forward bias, road bias, which one do I remove this or that, that skill they have to develop. So, this kind of a, uh, a model is very useful just to see what is happening in the circuit. Once I understand that, then I can figure out what to do next. Yeah, the ideal diode model uh, again is uh, very, very often used. This is especially used when you are talking about the voltage drop across a diode 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 volt being negligible, negligible like in a power supply circuit. Your, your transformer may be 12 sin omega t, you know, huge. So, 0 0.6 volts is something you do not want to bother about it. So, such cases you would just ignore. Yeah. Now, coming back to diode applications, let us quickly go through a few applications. Uh, now, rectifier application is the most common application. Now, I would strongly, uh, uh, and I do not know how much flexibility you have in your curriculum or how much your college will be happy about it or unhappy about it if you give some small projects to students. But something which is extremely good today, if, 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 if some students can make a simple power supply, okay, maybe in groups, okay, the amount of learning they will go through is tremendous. Because they get to see a transformer, you know, they, they get to understand, some understand of, of electric engineering, they see a transformer, they see the voltage, you know, they see the connection between peak voltage and RMS voltage, all these confusions are done. So, nothing to beat an experiment. So, I think it is a good idea. I do not know, uh, like, uh, uh, because uh, unfortunately, one of the biggest problem even in IITs we face is when we get our M Tech students, a good number of those students have never ever experimented. Uh, at least, uh, but I am, I am assuming all of you are from very good institutions, I am sure that is not a problem, definitely at your place. But many colleges, I am sure you may be aware of such colleges, experiments are rigged up and kept there. Students are asked to take what? Yeah. Take readings, okay. That is the silliest thing that can happen, okay. No student will ever learn anything if you do that. And if we get into our M Tech, good students who have come from that background and we have to teach them all basic electronics, okay before they are of any use to us. So, please remember and especially electronics is a course fortunately you can do a simple as I said all that you need is a multimeter, uh, I mean an oscilloscope, you know, sometimes even oscilloscope is not required, a multimeter is all that you need, a multimeter, a power supply and a functionator. You can teach the entire basic electronics just with that you know, and this amount of learning students go through. Why I am saying this? Because when you find the kind of basic questions students have even after graduation, electronic students then you are amazed something is wrong. So, I think you have a very big role to play and that is where I think we need your feedback also, you know what are the things where we should emphasize, you know then accordingly in the especially for the June uh, the lectures then those issues we could take care. So, we need lot of feedback from you. Yeah, so this is a clipping circuit, you will be doing some of this in the lab. Now, how do you analyze this kind of a circuit, any circuit. So, and uh, before we actually I have given a solution there, but anyway the most important thing whenever you get a circuit like this from the point of view of a student is to figure out what is happening in the diode more than what is the result. Okay. First he has to figure out how the diode is connected. Now, the diode is connected in this fashion which means that for the positive half diode will be off, okay, which means this is an open circuit. Okay. So, this can be let us say divide and conquer strategy is what we do always do in engineering. Okay. So, the entire branch can be removed for the positive half and that becomes a very, very simple, simple resistive network. So, you get output will be 0 0.75 of input, very, very simple. Now, the reverse what happens? Again, because this battery connected in series here till uh, this branch, the voltage across this particular branch has to exceed 3 volt, then only. So, some of these basic things if you understand, then it can be solved. So, I think that is very, very, very important this kind of circuits here, so, which I have given here. I am sure you have done this kind of thing and what I have done here is I just done the same thing, simulated it and see how it look like. So, this is the input here and this is the output will look like. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah, coming back to, so diodes as I said, you know something which students uh, really understand well and uh, it is uh, uh, basically there are not, not many conceptual problems there. Uh, but when you come to thinner diode, yes, that is where lot of problems students have, lot of problems. Why reverse, you, why positive, why negative, lot of, lot of, lot of confusion. So, this is where uh, we need to really emphasize. Again, as I said, an experiment is something which is very, very, very useful. Uh, so, thinner diodes are primarily reference diodes and used in 
as voltage regulators and typically the the thinner voltage would may be anywhere from a few volts to a few hundreds of volts. Now, uh, <coughs> today especially lot of these things you can relate to their charger, mobile charger in their hands okay. and uh, again if you can ask students to maybe design a simple voltage regulator or something, it is not you are not worried about the actual output of what they got, but more than that the process they go they are gone through and uh, uh, only if they burn a few components they learn something okay and uh, only thing it should be a measured it's not the lab should not burn okay maybe a component can burn yeah uh, so again a thinner simple thinner regulator uh, because again a thinner when you model it you have to model both the positive uh, forward bias region and the reverse bias region okay and those two resistances will be very different we'll see that will show you. I okay, will just show you an actual measurement of a thinner diode. Yeah. So, what I have done is we have connected a, a actual measurement. Now, this is using LabVIEW which is a very good uh, software, but unfortunately as Professor Kannan rightly said for education institution is very cheap. You get a 4 lakh license for about 100 users, but uh, still it is a costly, but the good thing about lab is very easy to do things, a lot of things can be done easily. Now, what I have what we have done is we have connected a, a, a thinner diode and the characteristics, let us see the characteristics, let us run it and see, let us hope, hope it works. Yeah, so you can see this is a thinner, yeah, so this is uh, nice to see. see uh, you can see this is a thinner diode. Now, very important thing to remember in a thinner diode is the forward region is exactly like a normal diode. And the look at the slope, this slope and this slope. What is the main difference here? If you model this, the, the which one has more resistance, forward region or reverse resistance? Reverse. Okay. So this is very very important, and this tells you a lot about a thinner. In a thinner diode, the is extremely important the way the voltage which you mentioned there is mentioned for a current. Okay. So, you can see here depending on the current like for example, if you are talking about 1 milliamp minus 1 milliamp, the corresponding voltage is around minus 2 point some 8 volts. Okay. But depending on that particular current here, you can get different different values. So, now putting putting it back, if you want a extremely accurate value of voltage in a thinner diode, what should you do? Sorry? No, no, no. Listen to my question again. Look at the graph. Thinner diodes are used all over the world for as voltage regulators. Okay. Now, if I want to get an extremely constant thinner voltage, what should I do? Then I design my circuit. What should I do? Just looking at the graph. What's the eh? No, no, positive I can't use, you know, because thinner, thinner, see, is positive. No, no, no. My question is, what should I do? What should I do? Sorry? No, no, no. I, I have no liberty. I, somebody has bought me a thinner. I have to use it. That's fine. I am talking only about this. My question is, where should I operate? Now, what should I do? Yes, that is under, taken for granted. But then, after a particular current limit is exceeded. Yeah, but you are all missing one big point. See, the important thing is, if you want, I asked a point. I used to. I told you something. You, I want very good accuracy. So, what should I do? I can't do anything. That's a given to me, no? I can't change the diode. You, uh, sorry, it has something to do with the current. No, on operate at a constant current. That word I was looking for. Nobody said it. Okay. So that's the important thing. So if you want a very accurate thinner voltage, see the exact voltage is not very important. Once I have a fixed voltage, I can do whatever I want. To do that, that's what this graph says here. Okay, this graph is telling is if I have, if I can, if I if I pass one milliamp current to this, I get some voltage. So I must have a constant current source passing only one milliamp. Okay, of, of course it has to be the reverse region. Then I get that voltage which is steady. Okay, and another very interesting thing about thinner is any other property of thinner as opposed to normal diodes. We'll put a diode also and show you. Okay, another diode. This is a thinner diode. Any other? 
in the year interesting thing about a, see a normal diode has a, another today is a very 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 important use of a normal diode one is rectifier we said clipper clamper anything else S silicon symbol diode has a very big use today sorry good very good temperature temperature sensor it's an extremely good temperature sensor now how is it used again same thing if you pass a constant current through a silicon diode okay for every degree rise in temperature the junction voltage will decrease by exactly 2 millivolt. You may be aware of an IC called LM35. LM35 just uses it, but only one difference. The output will be exactly 10 millivolt per degree centigrade. They linearized it, that is all they have done. So, all they have to do is a 3 terminal device connect any voltage to the input, output will be exactly 10 millivolt into your degree centigrade. So, if it gives you 290 millivolt, 29 degree centigrade. It's very commonly available, 20 rupees, but a fantastic thing. Okay, extremely good thing. All that it does is, it has a constant current source, pass pass that to a diode, and just take the voltage across it, amplify it, and linearize it. That's all he has done. Okay, all based on this principle. So this is a very 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 simple, though simple, a very good thing. Okay. So we have put a normal diode. Let's let's now use a see how a normal diode characteristic will look like. Ah, yeah, reverse region, no current then it shoots up. Okay. So, this is a normal diode. Again, you can see the forward characteristics of this and the previous inner diode were what? Similar. Another, another important thing is, look at the voltage, forward voltage is how much? This is a silicon diode. How much? Roughly around 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Okay. Based on that previous IS value, so what should, what do you think, we, if you guess back, what may be the IS value? 10 power minus 12, somewhere between 10 power minus 12 and 10 power minus 15. Okay, that is very, very evident here. Okay. So, this one thing. Now, one more thing before I disconnect it, uh, can you connect an LED? LED. Now, uh, there are a few more uh, types of special diodes, we will talk about them. One such special diode is an LED, I will put it up right now. Now, the most common uh, problem, if you any idea what, what if you do the measurement of an LED, how that will be different compared to this? Okay, good. Now, the cut-in voltage may not be that high, but you are right, sometimes can be uh, 2 plus, but it will be definitely more than 1.5 volts. Okay. Depending on the type of LED, you will, it will never be 0.7, that is the most important thing to do. Because unfortunately, this number 0.7 has got stuck into our head okay. and we have to get out of it and th that, that 0.7 or that voltage is a uh, uh, kind of it depends on the material use. If it is germanium is 0.2, if it is gallium arsenide and gallium phosphate, that kind of material, you have different, different, different values. Okay. So, we will do an experiment right now. This is a LED, yeah, same reverse characteristic, but look look for the forward, forward characteristics. Can you see? It is it's somewhere around 0 0.1 point, that if you expand that, you can see that around 1.8, okay, very different from the previous one. So, this is something very, very important to remember about an LED. The forward voltage is quite high, somewhere around 1.8. It can even be greater than 2, depending on the material. Certainly, if you say blue LED, it will be greater. Depends on the material. They are all different materials. And uh, LEDs, uh, LEDs uh, are made of all, all diodes which are used in the lab, the power diodes or the signal diodes, they are all most of the time made of silicon. Okay. Now, as a material, silicon is a indirect band gap material. Okay. Whenever you inject carriers, there is always recombination taking place. Okay. When for example, electrons are injected into the, into the let us say P region, there is recombination taking place all the time. Now, recombination can, when you, when recombination takes place, you are actually giving out energy. It can be give out either radiatively or non-radiatively. Okay. In a silicon, the chance of having a radiative recombination is negligible. Whereas, if you have special semiconductors like direct semiconductors, which are one example is gallium arsenide. Now, such as most of the 3 5 semiconductors come in that category gallium arsenide, aluminum gallium arsenide, indium gallium arsenide, all this, all of the, all these are direct band gap materials. In these materials, if you make a diode out of these materials, whenever you pass a forward current, it will emit light because the recombination that takes place has at least 50 percent of it will be radiative recombination. 
and the remaining 50 may be non radiative. So, a LED the principle of an LED is just to have a p n junction made up of direct band gap semiconductors and depending on the material you get different colors ok that is the principle of an LED. Now, let me go down uh, yeah we are talking about other diodes. Now, another LED we just now talked about is now LED is an extremely interesting uh, extremely again this is something you could enthuse students. The cost of an LED is only 50 paisa today, very, very, very cheap, very cheap. But the kind of things you can do with an LED is amazing. Okay. We will talk about one such thing. Now, uh, LED is also called an electro optic converter. The, it can convert the electrical current into an optical signal. In fact, LED, if you look at the light output, you would see that the light output is directly proportional to the current flowing through it. So, it is used in fiber optics communication as a source. Now, let us look at photo detectors and I have a purpose in discussing photo detectors now. Now, photo detectors LED is always used in which bias? Forward bias is very, very important to remember. Now, photo detectors on, on the other way they are always used in reverse bias. Now, again any radiation being a semiconductor, semiconductors have a problem because any radiation especially heat. Okay, would increase the number of carriers. Now, in a forward bias condition, if you put some heat, the, the effect of the excess carriers is negligible, but if it is reverse bias, the current is very, very small. Now, if you put any any radiation, okay, especially if you open the junction area, put some radiation light or anything, you would see that the current shoots up okay, very high. Now, the principle of photo detector is nothing but this. All that is done in a photo detector is you make a large depletion region. Okay make that large, so that most of the light falling on it falls in the depletion region. Now, what happens is the number of carriers will shoot up. So, in a photo detector and most of the time the visible light you can get you can use a silicon for that purpose. Now, in a uh, the current which is flowing because it is a reverse junction there is no light it will be nothing but our reverse saturation current. And as I said earlier even though the reverse saturation current I s may be 10 power minus 15 but because of the leakage current typically you, you the best you can get rather will be about 1 nano amp you cannot get less than that. Okay. Most of the diodes so in a photodiode also the typical current the reverse current is about 1 nano amp and that current has a name what is the name of the current dark current intentionally done to say that that is a current flowing when there is no light. And when light flows you have a you have what is called a photo current. Now, uh, you can think of another very interesting thing about a photo detector is because it is used in the reverse bias mode, you can think of this like a, a current source okay. and uh, if you model it, it has to be modeled as a current source as opposed to a diode where it has to be modeled as a voltage source. You saw that all diodes have been whereas here the photo detector you have to model it as a current source because what is the property of a current source? How do you model a current source? Which model would you use? Thevenin model or Norton model? Norton model. Norton model you have a current source and a parallel resistance and that resistance is ideally infinite. Okay. So, here a photo detector you can think of as a, a controlled current source with a resistance in parallel. Now, a beautiful uh, device can be made out of a LED and a photo detector called optocoupler. Now, this is something all non electrical students must see okay, or you should tell them. Now, optocouplers are extensively used. Now, the biggest uh, use of optocoupler is if you want to transmit a signal from one system to another system without interconnecting them. What is the problem if you connect two systems together? Eh, sorry, if you wire what is the problem? Impedance. Let's, let me ask a simple question. Very often you know you try to take your laptop somewhere and you want to print or something most people are scared to connect. Why? Eh? See what happens is one very, very uh, common mistake we all make is about ground. What is ground? What is the definition of ground? Let me ask a question. For an, a, for an aeroplane, where is ground? Which is ground for aeroplane? It is it, it body. What about a car? Chassis. Okay. So, the point is reference ground is nothing but a reference point. Now, because of the same thing, two systems you bring together, the chances of having exactly the same ground is almost you know 0. This is extremely dangerous. Now, if you connect two systems with two reference points and short them together, what will happen? If 
okay. sometimes you can have fire also okay. Now, this is where if you have you are talking about a high voltage system and if you count to connect that to another system through a wire you can have disaster. So, in most such applications you use optocoupler, optocoupler that is the beauty of optocoupler you do not have to connect okay. you have an electrical isolation. All that you do is you put your signal here this light shines other end you pick it up. So, both are sitting at their own ground level without any problem it is extremely useful and a, a very very interesting device optocoupler. Okay. So, especially non electrical students must see this why especially mechanical engineers you would they would burn a few things okay, just because of this ground is such a complicated concept and a lot of things are burnt just because they do not understand what ground is. Okay. Now, laser diodes my specialization is optical fiber communication I deal with this all the time. Now, laser diodes are nothing but let us say special LEDs where the they are fabricated in such a way that the light coming out is coherent. So, that is not but you can think of them as uh, let us say special LEDs and today laser diodes are used extensively in all communications they use, but more than that pointers okay. we all we are all familiar with the standard laser the kind of laser pointers. Okay. Uh, any idea what is the kind of power you are seeing here? like if you read it they will say why do they sell this. In fact, the what is the power of let us say a tube light the standard tube light 40 watts any idea what is power here 500 micro watt maximum yeah, I do not think it is even that. Okay. Why is it looks so bright whereas, the light 40 watt 500 micro watt looks so bright, but the 40 watt does not look that bright why coherence. So, this is where it is coherence you have two types of coherence one is what is called a spatial coherence which means is so sharp focused. Okay. So, that is an angular or spatial. So, it is extremely narrow beam whereas, the, the tube light it spreads all over the place. So, there is no spatial coherence number one. Second thing is what is called a temporal coherence or the spectral coherence. If you look at this light it looks so sharp red if you uh, uh, if you see the spectrum of it you would see that you have a extremely narrow you know uh, wavelength region. So, that is called the temporal coherence. So, a laser diode LED also does that, but LED is much broad much broader than an a laser diode. So, let us not get into that, but anyway before we uh, we have crossed the time uh, solar cells and just let me just stop with this varactor. Now, again another very good thing you can tell students is about varactors like I am sure all of so all students would have done you know uh, fine to radio and fine tuning you know and uh, so if you say that varactors are special diodes which are used in the reverse bias where if you change the voltage the capacitance of changes in a very small maybe in the in the sub picofarad range which you cannot change otherwise you can change the tuning and then they really understand so i think uh, uh, we'll stop here so is a very broad uh, kind of subject we talked a lot of things the diodes as you said is a topic well understood and uh, um, a lot of applications and conceptually students find this not that difficult yeah thank you.